Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for January 28th, 2021. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gracious God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you have embraced us as your own and made us one in Christ's body. By the power of your Holy Spirit, continue to nourish and strengthen us in the ways of faith, hope, and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our reading for today is Philippians chapter 3. Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is not troublesome to me, and for you it is a safeguard. Beware of the dogs. Beware of the evil workers. Beware of those who mutilate the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, who worship in the Spirit of God and boast in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh even though I, too, have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, These I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us, then, who are mature, be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, it's this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation so that it may be conformed to the body of his glory. By the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Paul is is now coming off of the idea of, of this sort of the Christ hymn around which Philippians is, is sort of centered. Um, and this, this mindset, this humility that we have in Christ, what, what does that mean now? Um, and he suggests this sort of breaking with the past and those who, would, who are sort of confident in their flesh. And literally what he's talking about here is the sort of this uh, faction that he has been sparring with of what he calls the circumcision. Those who suggest, um, usually from a Jewish standpoint, that 
part of the law has been that we needed to undertake all of the law. Part of that is to be circumcised. And so every believer who is male, obviously, um, needs to be circumcised, they say. But whether they're Gentile or Jewish, it doesn't matter. They still have to take on all of the law and sort of the, the visible sign, the sort of, um, uh, yeah, the, the visible sign of an invisible grace, we would say, um, is that act of circumcision. And he says, no, it's not about that at all. In fact, I think that all of those things that I did, he lists all of his accomplishments, right? If, if, if anyone has confidence to be, or reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more, right? He, he gives his pedigree, the fact that he is born as a, as a Hebrew person, right? He is, he is Jewish. He is from the, the tribe of Benjamin. Um, he is, he was a Pharisee. So, you know, his, as, as far as his understanding the law, he could, he has memorized the entire law. He could recite back and forth. He can argue, um, why the, from the, um, uh, Mishnah, this, the sort of added, um, laws on top of the law of Moses. Um, he can, you know, he can do all these things, but he looks at all of those things, all of those accomplishments that he had before he met Christ as rubbish, as, you know, trash on the side of the road. It is not useful. It is not helpful for me. All of those things. Those things don't earn me salvation. I I may have righteousness under the law, but I don't have salvation through them. Compared to the, the surpassing glory of knowing Christ, knowing God made flesh, all of that is if it's it's worthless. It's worthless. And so those who tell you that their pedigree is better, that those that tell you that you need to be circumcised or you need to do this or that just to earn this grace, they're worthless too, right? They're they're not going to get anything. And so he's going to press on towards this goal, right? Um, this goal of knowing Christ better and better, um, knowing this gospel and preaching this gospel. That is what's important. This, this earthly stuff, this fleshly stuff, this temporary stuff, this temporal stuff, all of it, this material stuff, it doesn't matter ultimately. There's, you know, we, we think about it a little bit, right? Because you need to eat and drink and, you know, like you, you need to stay alive. But as far as resting our salvation on our, you know, our finances, resting our salvation on our, you know, gender or or race or identity or anything like that right resting in on in our work or the things that we have done even for the church right all of these things do not give us salvation it is by grace we have been saved um and so he invites them again to this mindset of christ join in imitating me in this mindset of christ who remember christ emptied himself of all the stuff that meant to be god and took on humanity for the purpose of being a slave. So let's do that, right? Let's let's divest ourselves. Let's let's sort of like let go of all these things that we're holding on to as as sort of proof of our own goodness and proof of our own righteousness, knowing that those things don't actually save us. It is only Jesus Christ. It is only by grace we have been saved. So let's let go of those things and let's, you know, let's keep doing these things, right? Those who have shown themselves to be enemies of the cross, well, that's fine. They are, they are going to destruction. Their destruction is coming. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be the next day, but it's coming eventually. So don't worry about them. Don't worry about the people who try to kill you or, or, or um, you know, think that you're foolish for the things that you're doing. It doesn't, those things don't matter. What matters is following Christ. So what does that look like in your life? What does that mean um, for you? So be imitators of, of Paul, be imitators of Christ, have the same mindset. Um, that's, that's what he's calling us to. He will transform the body of our humiliation so that it may be conformed to the body of his glory. Remember, because Christ humiliated himself, because Christ was willing to lay down his life even um, take on death, even death on the cross. Because of that, God highly 
lifted him up and, and raised his name above the name of the every name, right? Um, so that every knee in heaven and earth should bow um, and give glory to God, right? So same, same sort of thing, right? We lay aside these things um, and we become servants, right? F- not for glory now, not that we seek glory in this, but that we seek the glory of God in everything that we say and do. This is a big challenge. It's hard to do. This is not an easy thing. Um, and in fact, we see, I was talking with someone yesterday about sort of the, we see the journey of Paul. We see his sort of early writings that are much more sort of, I don't know, um, arrogant and, uh, and sort of in your face. And then we see as he, as he ages, as he matures in his faith and in maturity, right, he's able to see things in a little bit different way. And it's much more about, you know what, don't worry about all those haters going to hate, as, as that, the great philosopher said. Um, but, you know, like it's, that stuff does not matter. Focus on following Christ. Focus on knowing Christ. Those are the things that matter the most. Um, those, those are the things that have eternal circumstances. Um, how, how do you treat people? How do you care for one another? Um, those are the things that are important. Um, this daily sort of grind, all of that sort of stuff, it's easy to focus on those things. And those things are not the things that have eternal circumstances or eternal uh, repercussions. So focus on those things. So that is uh, Philippians chapter 3. Let's go ahead and look at um, our mission yearbook. Palm Springs residents tune in to KGAY for spirituality, justice conversations with new worshiping community pastor. When Stonewall Ministries decided to use money received from the Presbytery of Riverside to purchase radio ads on KGAY, the pride of the valley, Nathan Sobers had no idea that soon he'd have a weekly show exploring spirituality and social justice. The organizing pastor of Stonewall Ministries in Cathedral City, California, one of the Presbyterian Church US, uh, one of the Presbyterian Church's USA's 101 new worshiping communities, was simply trying to get the word out about Stonewall Ministries' presence to the large gay community in the Palm Springs area. As the leadership team debated the value of buying radio ad time, younger members of Stonewall Ministries' leadership team asked, who listens to radio anymore, anyway? Laughing, Sobers told them that while their point was valid, the majority of gay people in the area were in their 40s and 50s and even older, and that they did, in fact, listen to the radio. And about half of the residents here, over 55, identify as LGBTQ+, Sobers said. With that, Stonewall decided to buy a radio ads on a trial basis in 2019. At first, when Stonewall's messages began running in May, not much happened. A few people, new people, came to worship at Stonewall, saying they'd heard the ads, and Sobers was getting anecdotal feedback that the ads might be working. People in the community were telling him they'd heard Stonewall Ministries' ads. As importantly, Sobers was getting to know KGAY's general sale man, sales manager, Stephanie Bergentino, the morning host, Ben Patrick Johnson, and the morning host, Ben Patrick Johnson. On December 1st, 2019, Johnson, a professing Christian and KGAY's um, morning host, decided to worship at Stonewall. Coincidentally, it was World AIDS Day. The service meant so much to him that he started talking about it the next morning on his radio show. He also reached out to Sobers and scheduled an interview for the second week of December to talk about it. It was new for me, Sobers said. I didn't make that big of an imp- I didn't make that big of an impression. But Johnson, who considers Sobers his pastor now, kept reaching out to him for spiritual support. In January, he asked Sobers to do another interview to promote Stonewall's ministry's upcoming Blessing Bags project. As Sobers invited listeners to join them in blessing people experiencing homelessness with bags of water, snacks, hygiene products, and socks, the radio station personnel were impressed. Kege decided to have monthly conversations with Sobers about spirituality and faith. And when the coronavirus hit, followed by George Floyd's death, it quickly evolved into bi-monthly, and now weekly conversations. 
We started out specifically talking about spirituality, Sober said, but now we have conversations about social justice and the gospel. More and more people in the community are interested in what the pastor on the radio has to say. Since the conversations on the radio started, Stonewall has seen a 48% increase in worship attendance. And Sobers is having quality conversations with people about faith and their spiritual lives on the back patio of the local gay bar. One of the most interesting and satisfying results is that I've become an, the unofficial chaplain to not only the staff at the radio station, but the local drag community, Sober said. Our mission at Stonewall is healing wounds. So many of us in the LGBTQ plus community were either kicked out or of or left the church over our sexual orientation or gender expression. Stonewall, Stonewall Ministries has received support from Presbyterian Mission Agency with uh, mission program grants. Paul Seebeck, the communication strategist, Presbyterian Mission Agency, is what wrote this. Who, who wrote this? Today's focus is Stonewall Ministries and K-Gay. Let us also join in prayer for PCUSA Agency's staff, Katie Carter, Presbyterian Mission Agency, and Laura Carruthers of the Presbyterian Foundation. Let us pray. Eternal and loving God, in the midst of a world of relentless change, grant us a deep and abiding sense of your sovereign power and abiding presence in our lives. May we walk to the way you have set before us in confidence, in hope, and in faithfulness to our calling in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Now let us continue with our prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Give us your peace, and, O God, that we may rejoice in your goodness to us and to all your children, and be thankful for your love revealed in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the faithful witness of Christian people. The vast universe of galaxies and stars. Friends with whom we have shared. The courage to be bold disciples. The labors of those who have served us. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks that Josh is continuing to, to recover, as is Evelyn. We also thank God that Brittany, one of the, our play school teachers, is back at work, uh, feeling much better. Her father is also home and doing much better and recovering. Um, she said she was part of the top 6% of reactions, um, some of the worst reactions. So, wonderful news. Give us your peace, O God, that we may be confident of your care for us and all your children as we remember the needs of others. Especially we pray for Episcopal and Methodist churches. Racial justice and reconciliation. Those who are poor or vulnerable. Agents of caring and relief.
help for those who are abused or neglected. People of God, for what else do we pray? We lift up John, a friend of Bill's, who is recovering at home after having fluid on his lungs. We pray for Sandy's younger brother, Bob, who is in critical condition in the hospital, um, but is actually off the, the ventilator and is doing better. We pray for Robin, who is in the hospital due to COVID-19 on oxygen. We pray for Linda's granddaughter, who continues to have seizures. We pray for Sherilyn, Sandy's sister, and Strawberry Plains Presbyterian Church. We pray for my grandmother and her continued recovery. <clears throat> for all the other things that we have on our hearts and our minds, we pray that you would do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. God, our shepherd, you have brought us this day to a time of reflection and rest. Calm our souls and refresh us with your peace. Keep us close to Christ and draw us closer to one another in the bonds of wondrous love. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now may the Lord, who is our peace, give us peace at all times in every way. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA, 2018 edition. Our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And our devotion came from the Mission Yearbook of the PCUSA. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a, have a very great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.